Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the First Presbyterian Church. As you can see, Reverend Casey is not here. Unfortunately, he's home sick, so let us keep him in our prayers. So we're gonna have a lay service with me, Heather, Joanne, everyone helping out. So that being said, let's uh, go through some announcements that we have. Tonight is the interfaith service we're gonna be hosting here, um, and it's at seven o'clock. So please come and join us with our fellow houses of worship in the area as we come together and do our interfaith service. As you can see, all the uh, supplies that have been given, donated by our church for the Gilead um, Food Bank, Gilead Presbyterian Food Pantry. And tonight, there'll be a net will collection also. So if you have more um, things you'd like to bring for the pantry or cash donations as well. Uh, next week will be the installation of the deacons and also the decorating of the church for the holidays. So if you could, after church service next week, if you could help us out by bringing things down from the attic and bringing things up to the attic and decorating, that would be wonderful. Also, the church's Christmas bazaar is December 10th. And if you have, you know, you're putting out your own decorations and you see something that eh, maybe you don't want to have any more, then bring it over and we'll try to uh, put it in the bazaar and uh, we'll sell, sell it as um, a fundraiser for the church. And we also could use bakers, so you can see Heather about uh, what, and Joanne about what needs to be um, made and done. So wreath making, wreath making, see, see Heather too. Um, let's see, there are a whole bunch of announcements in your bulletin also. Uh, so let, is there anything else from anyone? Any other announcements? Okay. Yes, Kathy. And the Jam Peak schedule also? And, and it doesn't, like I said before, it doesn't have to be our congregation. Karen and I did it yesterday with our book club. So all the ladies, you know, brought something over to my house. I drove it down. It was great. They were very appreciative, as always. And um, one, of, as an aside, one of the women there uh, was very grateful. And, and I gave her a hug because it was probably her first hug that she's had in a long time. And it looked like she needed it. So you, no, we didn't go inside. She was outside um, helping bring the food up. So it, it, we used to serve, but we haven't done that in a while uh, since COVID. But we um, just, they take it right out of the back of the car and bring it right up. So we're making connections not only by feeding them, but by being there with them. Okay, so if there's no other announcements, let us come together and uh, pass the peace and the good news of Jesus Christ. Feel free to get up and
So the opening prayer. Lord, thank you for bringing us here together today to worship you and to do your work here in Mayapak and beyond. Um, help me to lead our, the service and let us hope that Reverend Casey is back soon. In Jesus' name, amen. Call to worship. Please read the bold. God has looked favorably on all God's people and has redeemed all of creation. God has given us a mighty Savior, Savior and the Lord is reigning to celebrate. We gather to offer our thanks and praise to Almighty God. Please join us in the song. It'll be up on the screen. It's from our new hymnal, It Is Well With My Soul. seated.
invitation to confession. In humility, we are called to confess our sin, reaching out in penitence to our Lord and Savior. Trusting in the merciful love of God, let us pray together. Prayer of Confession. Gracious Lord, we are quick to identify our enemies and slow to name the ways we hurt others. You lead us in the ways of righteousness, and yet we prefer to walk in our own path. We are called to follow your lead in creating a beloved community. Yet we idolize wealth and power, heal us and help us, O oh God. Turn us from the ways of sin, the means that create unjust ends. Grant that we may seek to be for others what you are for us, a source of light on the way to peace. Amen. Lord, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is the good word of the Lord. Sovereign God, let your world rule in our hearts and your spirit govern our lives until at last we see the fulfillment of your realm of justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. First scripture reading, Jeremiah 23 verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore thus says the Lord, the God of Israel concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall no longer fear, longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord the righteous branch of David. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Savannah, that was wonderful. Today's second scripture reading. Oh, well, we're singing. Okay, the, the, we're gonna sing now.
now the second scripture reading. It's from Luke chapter 23, verses 33 through 43. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus. There with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hang there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, but we are getting what we deserve for our needs, deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied, Truly I tell you that today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in lieu of a message, I'm going to enlist help from Joanne and Karen. And I'm just going to start by saying it's, it, it is stewardship time. And I know last year I had us plant tulips. And I'm sure we all saw them come up around the cross at Easter time. It was really quite remarkable. And my message last year was when we plant and when we believe, things come through. Joanne and I have been working on um, Midnight Run. And I'm going to let her tell you her experience. But as you all know from my last you know, testimony, that uh, it is very moving. And I felt the same yesterday with Jam Peak helping those that, that can't help themselves. So Joanne, if you want to come up and thank you. And that these are ways to be stewards also by giving of ourselves as well as donating food and, and monetary as well. But uh, this, this is a great way. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, the weekend of Halloween, my son and his two daughters came to visit us. And that happened to be the Saturday that, uh, the Saturday before prep for Jan Peaks, no, for Midnight Run. And uh, you know, I was a little hesitant. I had not committed to go and help at Midnight Run that day because I knew my family was going to travel seven hours to get to me, and I didn't know how they'd feel about, you know, driving another good part of an hour to get to Scarsdale right afterwards. Um, but when I did ask them, they they were willing to do it and they were kind of excited. We had the morning free. Um, so we went and when we got there, there was so much energy and, and goodwill in the room. We were so welcomed. Um, my granddaughters are nine and 11 and they contributed their own energies to the room. Um, and everybody had a job to do. The girls were folding clothes and later they were assembling snack bags. Uh, Lloyd and I were in the kitchen making sandwiches <laughs> and we had a lot of fun with the people there. Every, they have a system whereby, you know, you line it up this way and, and you do it this way and it goes very quickly. Um, and of course, Johanna and Marianne were out in the main room. I, don't, I guess you guys were assembling uh, bags or Clothing. The clothes. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, in addition to us, there were other people who were, you know, kind of welcoming us into the group, including us, and getting our hands on things so we could be helpful. And it was, it was quite nice. It really was. Um, we stayed for a couple of hours, and then we left because we had other things we had to do, but that was fine. We didn't have to stay till the very end. 
they, I heard comments that they had not had this much help in a very long time, and they were really happy, because they put a lot of time and hours into doing this. Um, so anyway, uh, since that day, um, I was asked if our church would like to make the soup that they offer for the midnight run. They give out, they give out a bag lunch type of meal, they give out uh, clothing, and they also have a hot soup at every stop that they make, and it's for 100 people. Imagine making soup for 100 people. So anyway, I have the recipe. I think it's too soon to do it during the holidays. We're already kind of inundated, but I thought perhaps in January. And the way that I would try to do this is to have a sign-up sheet with the ingredients, who could bring in whatever ingredients. You know, they're specific. They have a specific recipe that they've been using for a long time. Um, and we're going to need people who like to cook so some people, if you want to bring in food, other people, if you'd like to be the cookers, the chefs, and then, you know, some people could transport. So, you know, this is a way to be part of a mission without recreating the wheel, but really offering something nice and uh, putting our goodwill forward. Thanks. Thank you, Joanne. And if you have, again, any blankets or sleeping bags or whatever you would like to donate to Midnight Run, we'll, we'll take in collection and we'll bring it down to them in January since um, the December is the Christmas Eve is where they're doing the run and we won't be able to participate in that. And November, I won't be around. So I don't know if you were planning on doing November or, yeah, yeah. we're. It, it gets a little crazy, but they did say that during the holidays they have lots of volunteers because the kids are home from school and things like that, so it's good. Um, second part of our um, stewardship kind of sort of mes message today, um, Karen's going to, uh, our financial techie person, is going to uh, tell us about um, you know required minimum distributions and how they can be um, yeah. Give it, I'll talk. Give it to the church. There you go. <laughs> so I just have one question, Joanne. Um, <clears throat> you're looking for people that are cooks. Will you take people that want to learn how to be cooks? Will you train us? Okay. Okay. That's fine. Following directions is good. Okay. Well, that means maybe I can be there. Okay. Good. All right. So, um, <clears throat> so uh, what I love about this church is that um, it's very active, you know, in the homeless locally at uh, Jan Peak, which is in Peekskill, and in the city through Midnight Run. Um, you know, this place gets stuff done. It's amazing what gets done. And it's not, so it's the active participation in the church, out in the community, um, with our nursery school, um, and yes, we have to collect money to support our endeavors as well. So what I want to encourage everybody to do, of course, contribute, everybody's already contributing their time, remarkable talents from everybody in here, and your finances, if you can. Um, so giving today, throughout the year, giving, give, regularly, give often, give as much as you can manage. One thing I learned about was that um, you can give not just today, but you can also give tomorrow and after you're gone. So obviously, remember us in your will, if you can. One other thing is that you can, so as people get older and you have this IRA, they at some age, they make you take some money out every year. It's called the required minimum distribution. So everybody don't fall asleep yet. Um, and it turns out that even if you, so I inherited a, a small IRA divided by all the kids in my family. And um, I also, even though I'm not of age, my mother would have been. And so I have to take out an RMD. 
It turns out if you take out the RMD, if you ask your broker or whoever it is for a form, you can have that donation go directly to the church. What does that do? It means that instead of you taking out the RMD and having to pay taxes on it, the entire amount can get sent to the church or some portion of it, whatever you deem, uh, whatever your heart uh, moves you to do. But it just means that it's a little more efficient way to donate if you wish. So since it's kind of coming up on the end of the year, let's seize that moment, okay? And thank you all for all your current and future donations. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. And as we all know, we love this church. That's why we're here. And we all do so much for it. And we all want it to be here no matter what it looks like in 200 years since it's been here for over 200 years. And everything that we do, I also want to say we don't have to keep it in here. We're going out there. But also invite someone to come. Invite someone to come that you know maybe doesn't go to any kind of religious service or whatever. Say, come and, and you can start with tonight at the Interfaith. And say, come and see what we do and see what we're about. And, you know, ask one person. Maybe that could be your goal for your stewardship for 2023 is to bring a friend. Okay, let's continue on with our service um, and rise in spirit and if able to him 85. Please be seated. All right, are there any prayer requests, any joys and concerns? Yes, Heather. Yes. 
Abby and Ryan. Casey. Casey. Well, that was number one. Yeah. It's a hard job. <laughs> Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us all here together. And please keep in prayer and in your, all of our thoughts, everyone that's listed in our prayer requests in the bulletin, as well as Abel Thomas, Abby and Ryan, the football players from the University of Virginia, and the community that were affected by them, Diana and uh, Mary and George's family. May they have a speedy recovery, and most of all, please, please hold Reverend Casey Carbone in your prayers and have him help have a healthy and speedy recovery. Amen. Um, we rise for the Lord's Prayer. Please join together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now at this time, we have our offertory. thank you for all that you have given us so that we can give to you. Please keep everyone in your prayers and have a safe for those people who are traveling and um, a happy Thanksgiving. Let us finish our, with our service with our final hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. <laughs>
Go now in Christ's peace, extend it to all you see, have a blessed and happy Thanksgiving, and come tonight to the interfaith celebration. Let us celebrate with the community in our area. God's name, amen. <laughs>